What's going on, guys? Welcome to my channel. Thank you so much for watching. Uh, Dirk Bonzani here. Uh, channel's Greenback Grains. Uh, kind of do a little bit of farm work, a little bit of wiring, really a little bit of everything. Kind of do-it-yourself stuff on the farm. Uh, background in electronics, as you'll see by a lot of my other videos. I've got uh, wiring for the Bronco. Feel free to check those out. Um, electric stuff, electric lightning, charging, all those fun things. Uh, so I love tinkering. I love wiring. Uh, feel free to subscribe if you like that kind of stuff because I'll keep you posted. I'll keep you on my little projects here. Uh, today is a special day. We've got the new uh, Gen 3 Raptor. And basically what I'm going to do is walk you start to finish on doing some ditch lights. Uh, I really don't plan on doing a whole lot of modifications to this truck. I don't keep them very long. Um, as you probably know by my lightning video, I had the thing for about four months and I'm getting ready to do a review on this. I just wanna get a few more miles on it and I'll film that video and give you guys an update on my thoughts for that versus lightning and all the other trucks I've had. So stay tuned on that one. Uh, today's video specifically is just wiring. Um, thank you guys for watching. I'm gonna get right on this. I'm gonna try to video, get up close and personal, tell you how I do it. Just like every other video out there, you know, wire at your own risk. You know, make sure you check your lights, check the amperage on them, things like that, just for uh, safety purposes. If you know what you're doing, great. Um, this is just more of like helpful tips, right? So uh, showing you what I'm doing and my specific light setup. So here we go, guys. All right, so we're gonna get into the hood here. We'll go to our first side. I threw a light up here. I threw some protective, just some tape up here. I don't wanna scratch the uh, paint, obviously, so definitely suggest that. Um, and what I've noticed is I could just pick up on this and pop this up. Gives me a little bit of flexibility. There's another one right next to it. So whatever you need. Um, this just pops right up. Doesn't look too bad, actually. See there's a rubber grommet here. So we're gonna get in there. We're going to that bolt right there. And this guy, sorry, trying to keep the camera steady for you. It looks like it's gonna go like this with the skinny side on the bottom there. So that way it sticks in there. This is why you wanna have a, some tape there so you don't scratch anything. I'm probably going to end up putting a little rubber grommet or something there just for extra, but we'll see. Let me tighten this in, see how it looks. So that's going to kind of hold it right there. We'll see how it goes. All right, guys, I'm going to start on the bench with the lights I got. So I have a set of rigid lights on the Bronco. Uh, we've got a two-door Bronco. That's my wife. She'll see a lot of those videos posted. And I put a whole bunch of lights on that. I like the Oxbeam brand. These are on Amazon. These guys are about 120 bucks, maybe 100 bucks. Just depends on if you're getting them on sale or whatnot. Um, I love the stuff that these lights do. Um, they come with a separate switch. So if you're just looking to wire lights in and not run something into the cab, then don't use these ones. Um, but I like these because they're bright. They come with a really nice harness, a 40 amp relay, and basically already loomed with an extra fuse on there. Um, so it's really plug and play as far as that goes. Uh, obviously you have to wire into the uh, aux switches, which I'm gonna go over. Uh, comes with these brackets for the, for the mount, and then of course the bolts like you see in every other light system. I bought these, and I'll put a link in the description. These guys are, you can see they're, they're pretty heavy duty. They are not expensive. Um, I, I wanna say they were 30 bucks, maybe somewhere around that bracket. But I'm looking at the like $100 ones, and I'm like, I don't really understand the big difference because they're just kind of shaped a little differently. But I'm gonna put these on. It looks like what's what a lot of guys are using. And if it, uh, I'll let you know my review and how it works. These, these aren't super heavy. I mean, they're heavy, but they're, if they start flopping around, I'll let you know, I'll give you an update on it. Um, so yeah, these are cool because they uh, have a strobe. They have a pure amber middle light, and then they have the regular white too. Um, and I love the amber lights. I think they look really cool if you're doing off-road or we get a lot of fog in our area here. In the mornings, it's nice to have those on, uh, give a little more visibility. So that's what I'm doing on my setup here. And uh, it's pretty simple. So link to the description on the lights, uh, link in the description on the brackets. You're gonna need some zip ties, get yourself some. Uh, Harbor Freight's a good place for those. They're pretty inexpensive. Get yourself a light. Um, I've just got this cheap cordless LED so I can see under the hood. I've got a, I'm not sure if I'm gonna need it. I'll let you know. Uh, this pops out the little pins, uh, little plastic pins under the hood if you're not familiar. Uh, multimeter or, um, or probe, these probes are great. You put them on the battery and you can actually send power, uh, just read power or whatever, and it's got a built-in fuse. So these are kind of cool or a test light would work. Uh, maybe some wire strippers, of course, whatever kind you prefer. 
and I like to solder connections. Um, that's just how I do it. So I got soldering iron, I got my little cleaner there, and that's it. So that's what I'm using. Um, I'm sure I'm going to have a couple screwdrivers out to get the panel off. So let's get started. All right, here's what we got, guys. I put a little, uh, one of little, my little foam polishing pads in there just to hold this up a little, give me a little room. Um, and I'm just using my Milwaukee just on a light setting. 10 millimeter, not hard stuff, guys. This is, this is easy. We'll get this off. Get this all the way out. There we go. That's what it looks like. So actually, yeah, you just go all the way in like that. And I'm just gonna hit it once, so it's it's already pretty tight right there, but I'm gonna probably wanna move it around a little. Just make sure it's straight. You see what I've done? Screw is uh, tough to see, but the screw's right there holding the bracket. And I mean, that thing is, is solid, so definitely a good mount, it's heavy duty. Let's get the light on it. All right, guys, a couple things I've figured out. The, with these specific lights, they come with these enormous bolts, which I get, because it's, you know, they don't want to flop around, but it doesn't fit through this hole here on that Amazon bracket. So what I've done is I have a, like a nuts and bolts thing like you may have at home. I got a little shorter one. So it's still a pretty fat bolt and it fits in there. And the thing I like about the black and it might be a little tall, we're gonna see. And if it is, I can put the nut on top, which I may do. Um, you see how short it is? So it doesn't stick way down like the other one, which I think looks terrible. So uh, a little shorter one, obviously in a dark color, it's a little more stealth. So we're gonna do that and uh, I'll let you know how it works here, we'll try it out. So obviously we wanna run the cable too, right? So the cable's gonna tuck in under here, so just kinda get that where you need it. I'm gonna get this started so it's in here and I'm not fussing around with two things. Uh, the light comes with these screws with the uh, washers, of course. So I'll just throw those on there, pretty obvious. Lightly tighten here for now. Looks like I can tinker with it here. So I just got it tucked around there. Let me get, I mean, obviously you could cut this if you guys want it to sit flush, but my thought is water's gonna get in there anyway. And the gap, there's enough gap there, it's not gonna scratch the fender. So yeah, let's pull the tape off, I'll show you. Now we're done with the metal part. Yeah, I did too good of a job wrapping it. I'm gonna get that out, but you can, get, you can see, I got plenty of space there. So, and I'm gonna clean this up. I may come behind here. I just don't want the wire sticking way out here. So we'll fuss with that a little bit, but it's on there. That looks pretty cool. I like the, if you can find yourself the, maybe get some of those before you buy these, the darker, shorter size nut and bolt. Looks pretty cool. All right. We're basically just gonna go to the other side the same way and then we'll start with wiring. All right, passenger side, just to, all you gotta do, I took the antenna off, just unscrew it. It's finger tight. And then uh, there's still, it's right there. So as you can see, this is a better shot than the other side. Plenty, plenty of room there. You're not scraping the side or anything, so you're good. I've got them facing back, so they kind of go with the body line and in. That's how I got them. So that's a nice thick bracket though, and uh, basically repeat what we did on the other side there. All right, guys, here's what I've got just mounted. This bracket is tight. This thing ain't going anywhere. It's, I've got to tighten the sides here. I'm going to obviously align it. Uh, make sure they're high enough for me where I need them. So I've got it tucked. Obviously, if you wanna, you could slice this a little bit, and I may do that. I haven't decided yet. Uh, suggestions on what you guys did, throw them in the comments. Love to know. But it looks pretty cool. So I like them on the inside of the windshield, but I just realized as I did this and I messed around with the antenna, you probably figured it out. The antenna blocks the light if it's on the inside like this. Obviously you can mount them differently and have them on the outside. All right, so you can't mount this bracket the other way. 
The problem is if you try to flip it around, um, it's not going to, sorry, this way. You can tell it's not really designed to go that way because um, it's going to be way over here and obviously got to move it way over so it's just totally defeating the purpose. I mean, so I've seen a couple, I've, obviously on Instagram I've seen a couple guys, no antennas. I, I'm sure I could take this out and just run the antenna under the hood, not the end of the world, or just do a shorty and, you know, who cares. Um, but it is it is definitely blocking the light with this particular bracket. And I guess that's, you know, that's the price you pay if you buy a cheaper bracket. Um you kind of need one that would go out maybe a little bit more. I mean, I love the style of this bracket and I don't really care about the antenna. So just be aware of that. If you listen to FM radio, this might be not, this might not be the bracket you buy, right? All right, here we go with the wiring. Got some zip ties ready. I got a nice ground right there. That's an eight millimeter. I just pulled the eight up and threw it underneath it. So it's nice and solid. Uh, we're gonna use the positive terminal here. It's fused. I actually pulled the fuse out just for now. So we can get it all connected and not have live power. And I just kind of drape the wires across for now. We'll run them here in zip time. All right, so what I'm doing is I'm running these. I found this guy, this little flap here and pick this up. And this is, uh, looks like a washer squirt, I think. It goes up here, yeah, I think it's the washer. So I noticed that was going in there and I realized there's a little channel in here. So I tucked the wire into there, ran all the plugs through there and kind of channeled it along here. As you can see, I haven't gone all the way down yet. Uh, zip tying them nice and neat, and then I'm gonna clip these down. So that's a good place to kind of hide your wire. Um, there's nothing crazy under there. It's just a, it's all just clipped. So it's easy to just pop all these up. And you can see you get some room in there to work. And I'm gonna basically run them down here, uh, away from the, the hood hinges. Um, I'm gonna move this one too, and I'll tuck nice and neat in there. And then I'll have some area to work. Um, and you can see I got that wire through the firewall down there. Sorry, there's no light at the moment. My light died. Uh, I ended up cutting them. Um, it was just really tight. That's a really thick grommet. I'm just going to solder them together. It's just a better connection anyways. Um, and I'm not planning on taking these off, so I can just cut it if I needed to. All right, let's finish it up. All right, so we're all tucked, getting ready to uh, zip, zip tie. And I've got the ground connected. i got my red wire sitting here hanging, waiting for power. That is gonna to go to my auxiliary switches, which are in uh, down here in the corner is where all your wiring is. And they're really hidden up there. You gotta kinda of get your hand in. It's a really tough spot for me to get the camera in. Uh, so I'm gonna get them pulled out, um, and then I'll show you the screen that identifies the wires inside the truck, so. All right, in the truck now, guys. We're gonna go key on, get your screen lit up, go to features, go to owner's manual. Uh, categories, visual search. Let's do categories. There it is. Instrument panel. So click that. And I'm going to go all the way down to the bottom. Auxiliary switches right there. What are they locating the wires? It's all right here. Um, we need identifying the switch wiring. It's the last one. Click on that. And you can see right here, it tells you exactly. It shows, even shows you the amperage on the right, which is pretty cool. Let me see if I can zoom it. There we go. Better shot there. So that's these switches up here on top. Uh, now from the factory, auxiliary one does the rigid, um, the secondary fogs on the bottom there. So I'm likely going to use two. That's a 15 amp circuit. Just to have them in a row. So uh, 50 amp circuit, 15 amp circuit and a green brown wire. Let's go find it under the hood. So the black cap ones are the switch ones. And then way down there, you can barely see the edge of the white. Those are wires that go throughout the truck and those are identified inside the uh, screen I was just in as well. So feel free to check those out if you want to use those wiring points. Green brown. And there she is. All right, so we're gonna connect my red right here to that guy and then we'll have, be able to switch this on and off. So. Tidied up under the hood here, uh, zip tied a couple here. Uh, I've got all the wires tucked away from the hinges. That's definitely a tip there. You wanna make sure when you're shutting this hinge that there's no wires near there. So tuck them up. That's why I've got them all under this plastic thing here so I know they're secured. Let me flip the camera around. Right, so we're going up here, we're going to switch two. Nice. 
nice. They're running. Beautiful. All right, we're going to run through the modes. So I've got the mode switch, basically. I gave myself a little extra. I wanted to hide it. That's what it looks like. We're going to run through the different modes here just by clicking that mode switch. And you'll see here. I'll turn the lights off so you can see a little bit better. And we'll put the camera up front. So this one's exposed a little bit, but I've got it kind of tucked under here and then a zip tied on the bottom. Um, and then I've got this other wire tucked up way up close here going through this little channel. And like I said, these just pop right up, so it makes life easy. Just watch out for your wipers. They are moving behind it. So you want to make sure you're nice and secure under there. Zip tie it good. Um, and then what I did is the wiring right here. See all the wires in color. We are soldered, wrapped up. My relay is down here. Nice and neat. Sorry, I'm out of focus here. So that's how I did this one. You may not have a relay with yours, and just depends on the wattage of your lights. So always check those things out. Um, obviously this is on a 15 amp circuit from the factory, but I've got another fuse in line with it as well from the wire harness that came with it. So, uh, make sure you don't have any tools under the hood. Looking good. Everything's reclipped. All right. There they are. Let's try them out. Let's see how these things look. All right. Let's jump through the modes. Cool. Just cycle through them. No full amber. That looks pretty sick. Of course, we're in a garage. I know it's tough. Uh, it's completely light outside, so I'll have to do a night run. We'll run it out in the driveway maybe at some point. And I'll get a video out on that. But you get the idea, guys. Thank you so much for watching. These lights are awesome. Obviously, we'll get them adjusted. Put out really good. I mean, for what they're supposed to do, that's pretty good. That's just the thin section there. I'll show you from the front shot here what it looks like. So if we go uh, here, down the mode switch. So there's both. There's your strobes, which you can do white and amber. Strobes and amber only. Kind of nice if you're on the side of the road. Obviously, it'd be better in the back. We'll probably put some back in the back, just a different type. And then just white. Those things are bright. I got to say, they're pretty close because I had the rigids in here doing the same test, and they were right there with it. So for a $100 light, I'm pretty impressed. They're definitely cool. Thanks for watching, guys. Appreciate it. This video was helpful. Feel free to give me a thumbs up. Subscribe if you like. We'll keep the videos rolling. Thank you.